So on this channel I vlog about all sorts of things, pretty much anything that I think can make life a little more action-packed and free. That includes brain training, working out, muscle fibre recruitment, productivity and also coding. And of all those things, the thing I get asked about probably most often is how do you begin programming? Where's a good place to learn coding? Which programming language should you learn? Well, that's the right question. So learning to program is a great idea for a ton of different reasons. First and foremost, it's excellent brain training. When you're programming, you're thinking in an abstract way. You're having to think creatively and use your resourcefulness. And it's just a kind of mental exercise where you're holding these ideas in your head, coming up with solutions to problems, and there's nothing quite like it. And I think it's fantastic for increasing your creativity and your ability to hold information in your brain. It's great for your working memory. I've done a video on that, watch it. Um, and of course you can also use it for a ton of other things. Programming is of course great for business and your career opportunities but it's also great for making things for yourself. A lot of people think of programming as something they do in order to make a program that's going to make them rich but actually programming can be very useful just for making tools to help you with the things you do every day. I make programs that help me with my writing work for instance. But yeah programming has actually also brought me a ton of opportunities in my career and just in life. So if you've been following me on social media and watching my channel for a while, then you might know that I created an app called Multiscreen Multitasking. This turned out to be quite a big hit and I was so proud of that because it was just an idea I had on my own. I learned how to code it and it just took off. So just from, the, just from my own bedroom, I came up and built this thing that ended up being really successful for me. And that ended up being pre-installed on over 100,000 handsets in India. So that was very exciting. And that then led to the opportunity to work with Cold Fusion to go go on the Voxis launcher, which was his design and an awesome creation. And I was lucky enough to handle the coding element of it. And that then led to the opportunity for me to write development articles and programming posts for Android Authority, which later evolved into creating video reviews for new handsets and getting to test out cool technology. I eventually got to fly over to San Francisco and meet the team, that was very recent, that was also an awesome opportunity. And then on top of all that, I've recently been able to write a book on Unity development and I've had my first properly published book which just recently went onto Amazon, so check that out if you're interested in learning more. But the point I'm trying to make here is that programming opens up doors and it creates opportunities and it's done an awful lot for me and I'm not even the best programmer by any stretch of the imagination, I would say I'm average at best. I taught myself, I didn't do a degree, um, I don't have a computer science degree and everything I've needed to learn I've just sat down and learned it so it can be done and I actually think that's one of the things that helps me to teach other people because I understand what you're going through when you try and learn. I know how difficult it can be to pick up a new programming language and that's why I'm going to share with you here how you can develop your coding skills from naught and then learn how to do some of this cool stuff too. So the first question that a lot of people ask me when they want to learn about programming is which programming language should they learn? And that's obviously a pretty good place to start. There's a ton of them, as you probably know. There's Java, C Sharp, C++, C, there's Basic, there's Kotlin, there's Python, and people have no idea where to start or what they need to learn. And there's no easy answer to this. The best answer is that you should learn the language that allows you to make the thing you want to make. So for instance, if you want to make an Android app, then the official programming language for Android is Java, although um, Google has just begun to support Kotlin um, out of the box with Android Studio. So you now have two options for officially supported programming languages. If you want to make a computer game in Unity, then you might learn Java or you might learn C Sharp. If you want to create an iOS app, then you might create something using Objective-C or you might learn Swift. So the option you pick is going to depend on what it is you want to build. If you want to build a website, then you'll need HTML and CSS. And I'm not going to run through all the different options right here. The best thing to do is to say, I want to make an app, or I want to make an Android app, or I want to make a computer game for the PC. Search it in Google and find what the best recommendations are. You'll probably see there's a couple of different options, and you should take whichever route is probably the officially most supported one. Um, and also the easiest one, uh, the one that will give you the results you want the quickest whilst also giving you useful skills that will be transferable to other projects 
later on. The best way I think to learn anything is to know what you want to do with it and then learn the skills you need to do that thing. So don't sit down and say, I want to learn programming. That's too broad, it's too mammoth a task. Instead, sit down and say, I want to make an app that does X. And then what you need to do is you need to learn the specific skills to allow you to do that. And that contextualizes the things you learn. So instead of just thinking I'm learning a command that does something very vague, instead you're learning a command in order to do this specific thing and you can see its usefulness right there and you can put it into your program and see how it sits with all the other commands and statements you've learned. Obviously pick something easy and this is where a lot of people I think go quite wrong and I've never understood it myself. People say to me I want to make an app and I'm like great what's it going to be and they're like it's a revolutionary app, it's going to connect people in a way that's never been connected before and I'm like so you want, so it's cloud based and it's revolutionary, it needs to work on a lot of different devices probably it's far too ambitious. If it's your first app, don't make your first app something really ambitious. Make your first app a calculator or make your first app a word processor. The first app I made was a new keyboard for Android, which has slightly bigger keys. I went on to make a word count app and all that did was count the number of words that you pasted into a um, text box. So basically, pick an idea that's easy. You might have that grand idea for something amazing, but don't make that your first project. I mean, why would you make your first project something easy? It can still be original, still be useful, still be something that you hope will sell, but don't make it into something that's gonna be hugely difficult to program. Come up with something simple that you are passionate about and that you think will be rewarding, and then ask yourself by searching on Google, what is the best language to make this thing for this um, platform? and then learn the specific skills that you need to make that thing. Probably start out by reading a basic overview book. So if you want to learn Java for Android, then you just read a book called Java for Android. If you're anything like me, then it will start to go over your head once you get past about chapter four. That's fine, put it to one side and start implementing what you have learned into that app that you're building. And then as you get stuck on things, just Google like, how do I access images on, on a device in Android Studio? How do I um, use strings in Java and etc. And as you do this, you'll build up a working knowledge and there'll still be loads you don't know, but that's actually the way with programming. You often don't know the majority until you need it. And even the stuff you do know, you often have to look up online to remember the syntax and how to phrase it. So don't worry about learning everything, just worry about building the thing you want. Do your research to find what the easiest way to start with is and also what the most official default way to start is. Once you have decided the project you want to work on and the platform you're targeting, then you'll need to install a few things on your computer in order to get started and to create the window where you're gonna actually start editing the code. First, you'll need to download the programming language or the interpreter. So if you wanna learn Python, then you'll need to learn, then you'll need to download Python. If you want to learn Java, then you'll need to download the JDK, which is the Java Development Kit. Um, then you want an IDE, that's an integrated development environment, and that's where you enter the code. So you download the interpreter so that your computer understands it, and then you enter the code and run it and debug it in the IDE. And you might need additional bits. For example, if you're creating Android apps, you'll need the APK. So that's gonna sound a little bit confusing, but again, you can do all this by searching on Google. Once you know the platform you need, just do setting up Android Studio development or setting up Unity development. But if you wanna to learn to code even more quickly and you want the end result to be even better, then you can try implementing some accelerated learning techniques as well. So of course, accelerated learning techniques are strategies that can be applied to any kind of learning in order to learn more quickly, uh, to get rid of that whole notion that you need 10,000 hours to become a master. So one example is what I just recommended, that you start on a project instead of just trying to learn programming. And when you structure your learning in this way, it gives it more context, as I said, and makes it easier for you to visualize how things work and also to know what you need and to see how it all works together. This idea was also outlined in another book called The First 20 Hours, and there it's called the target performance level. So the idea here is that you come up with a target that you want to achieve and then you learn what you need in order to achieve that target. And of course, if you want to continue your learning, you then create a slightly harder target. And the way you might apply this to something else, such as learning a language, is you may say, for instance, I want to be able to order my lunch in a restaurant, that's what I need to learn. Another option is the Feynman technique, and the basic idea behind this is that you learn enough in order to teach. You try and explain what you've just learned, and then you look for stumbling blocks, uh, areas where things get complicated or where you can't quite come up with a good metaphor, and that's probably a weakness in your own knowledge. And like I say, I've been teaching tutorials and writing this book, 
and that's actually helped me to accelerate and improve my programming skills massively because I need to really understand it in order to explain it simply. So try that, try writing down what you've learned as though you were teaching someone else. If you can sell that writing, um, then even better. And there'll always be a home for it on the Bioneer, of course. And then finally you have the DIS technique, which is recommended by uh, Tim Ferriss. And I don't remember that off the top of my head. So it's deconstructing, selection, sequencing, and stakes. Basically this involves setting stakes for yourself to make sure that you actually do it, for instance, you will get slapped if you don't learn programming. It means looking at the best order to do things in. Perhaps that means starting from the end, and that's a good example as well in programming. It's often a good idea to take a finished product and then to deconstruct it, to reverse engineer it and see how it worked. Um, and sequencing involves coming up with the best sequence in order to learn each step. Uh, when doing this, he also breaks it down into further smaller categories. I highly recommend the book the Four Hour Chef, if you want to learn more about his recommendations for accelerated learning. Uh, one of the best tips in there is just to go to someone who knows their stuff and ask them. And that's how I got my start in programming too. Someone very knowledgeable told me um, a little bit about programming in basic. And from that, I've learned everything else. And that's one last thing to bear in mind. When you learn one programming language, it becomes much easier to pick up others. That's because you'll find that a lot of the rules and the syntax are the same. I wrote a post recently on the Bioneer about learning programming without programming, where it tells you about the structure and how it works without actually using any of the syntax. If you're interested in that, the link will be in the description down below. Basically, once you understand variables and once you understand conditional statements, you can do pretty much anything and the rest is just syntax. Ooh, look at that. If you're looking for an easy project to get started with, then I do highly recommend Unity is a good place to start if you want to create an Android app, which is my specialty. So Unity is a game engine and an IDE and it basically removes the need for a lot of code whilst making the code that you do enter quite logical and um, streamlined. So it's a great place to start with Android development and especially if you set yourself the task of making something very simple, like a very simple platform or a very simple infinite runner. And you can learn a lot of um, syntax and basics of programming there. That's my friend. You can actually make a platform game or even a 3D game in a matter of hours or days as opposed to years. So. A great place to start out and it's also very rewarding because you can see it working there on the screen. Unity is also cross-platform, meaning that you can publish to Android, iOS or the PC. So don't be afraid of programming. It's complicated, it looks impossible, but if you take it one step at a time and don't worry about learning the whole thing, it's actually a lot easier than you think and it's incredibly rewarding. And I'm going to be talking in the future about the nature of focus and concentration and you'll see why programming has the power to make you incredibly focused. So stay tuned for that. As well as all of my usual stuff, I do still have that Bruce Lee diet on the way. I have a post about the GDP pocket on the way. Um, I'm gonna be talking about the best training tools. I'm gonna be talking about some book recommendations for fitness. I'm gonna be talking about some cool productivity tips, etc. So if you like the sounds of that, then please stay tuned and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a ton for watching. If you found this useful and interesting, please consider liking and sharing. It really helps me out and I love hearing your comments down below. So please post there if you have anything to contribute. Um, check out my social media on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram where I'm trying to be more active. And yeah, thanks a ton again for all of you who um, watch regularly because yeah, I, I love making this channel. I'm sorry it's been a couple of weeks since the last video. I am increasing the output. I've been working on some cool stuff that I'll be sharing with you over the next couple of months. So stay tuned for that. Thanks once again and bye for now.